Hey, what's happening, guys? Today we are going to talk about choosing a capacitor. This is an incredibly in-depth subject, so you know we're going to get into I don't know 10 to 15 minutes of it, digging as far as we can at that point. You could go on about this for months. So I'll try and make it so that you know those of you who are new to designing circuits can figure this out a little bit. So, what do we need to know to choose a capacitor for our circuit? Well, where you need to know the voltage. And we need to know the capacitance. But what else do we need to know? Because there's other factors uh, that are going to come into play. I mean, this, this right here is the basics. You have to know this. Now, come down here. Then we have our ESR, our equivalent series resistance. Every capacitor is going to behave to some extent as a resistor. We're also going to need to know its resonant frequency. Because when a capacitor reaches this resonant frequency, Dissipation is going to change. Oh, yeah, so we're going to need to talk about uh, the dissipation factor as well. Yes, indeed. Our dis factor. So all of these things have to fit together to make your capacitor choice work in the circuit. Okay? So all those things we talked about so far you can find in the data sheet. You're going to find almost everything you need in the data sheet, but you just kind of need to know what it means. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the dielectric. So our capacitor is simply two plates. And they're separated. here this dotted line this material that is what is known as the dielectric that is what separates the two plates of the capacitor and is very important in figuring out our capacitance so to figure out our capacitance the formula is pretty simple capacitance equals this uh, Greek letter which stands for the dielectric permissi permittivity well, permissivity, permittivity, <laughs> times the area of the plate in square meters divided by the distance between the plates, also in meters squared. And that will give you your capacitance. So as I said, this dielectric here, can play an important role in finding that because different materials have different dielectrics. So let's talk about a couple of them. Uh, we have ceramics. We have ceramic capacitors. Ceramic. And the ceramic uh, rel permissive relativity is, is low, somewhere between 12 to 100, relatively. Now, there's another type of ceramic that's called a type 2 ceramic, and it goes from 200 to 14,000. Then we have film capacitors, and film capacitors can range anywhere from 3.3 to maybe 4. They're, they're, they have a very low range in them. Uh, paper capacitors are around 3.3, glass um, 3.7, and mica somewhere in the 5 to 8 range. So the dielectric, as you can see, is important in figuring out the capacitance. Next up is going to be the temperature. 
different capacitor types operate at different capacitor uh, at different temperatures. So we have our electrolytics. We'll just call them electro. Uh, we have film capacitors. And we have our multi-layer ceramic capacitors. Now our aluminums operate up to about 150 C. The film capacitors about 110 C and the multi-level ceramics are good up to 200 C. So that is a factor that you need to consider when type choosing the type of capacitor. How hot is it going to be? Not just the not just the operating temperature of the circuit itself, but the ambient temperature of the environment in which it operates. Next up, we certainly have to talk about ESR, equivalent series resistance. That capacitor is going to have capacitive reactance in it, which is going to behave a lot like resistance. It's, it's a combination of serial inductance and capacitive reactance but we'll talk about that so our capacitive reactance which is the formula xc is equal to 1 over 2 pi what frequency because capacitors are frequency dependent especially when we're talking about ac times the capacitance so now you've learned how to find the capacitance and you can find the capacitive reactance for finding um, your equivalent series resistance. All right, next up, let's talk about resonance. If you have ever heard the phrase insertion loss, And if you mess around with radios, I'm sure you've heard that. But if you've ever heard the phrase insertion loss, it is a reduction in the power of a signal when it travels through a capacitor. Now, in an ideal capacitor, it increases in frequency forever. But no capacitors are ideal. So what happens in this case is... It increases until the capacitor reaches its resonant frequency. And when it reaches that frequency, the insertion loss drops. So resonance is something that you're definitely going to be looking for if you're working in audio circuits or RF circuits. However, it is not very important when you're talking about, you know, perhaps DC power supplies like uh, switch mode power supplies. Resonance is not as important there as it is in these types of circuits. So now everything goes together, remember, because when we talk about resonance, then we also want to have um, low equivalent series inductance also plays a part in uh, power loss and uh, signal hygiene. And then now we have to talk about dissipation because, you know, we're going to generate some heat now. So because we've talked about our equivalent series resistance, and we know that resistors dissipate heat, that's how they resist current. We now know that we have what's called the dissipation factor in our capacitors. So when an AC voltage is applied to the capacitor, then we're going to have a dissipation factor. And we can figure that out. That's known as your DF dissipation factor. And it is equal to our equivalent series resistance see how everything coming back right to there our equivalent series resistance over our capacitive reactance and that is going to give you a dissipation factor in watts but everything keeps pointing back to your capacitor acting like a resistor all right let's talk about some types of uh, capacitors 
we have ceramic type capacitors and uh, they are very high precision they're non-polarized and they have a very wide tolerance range you're gonna find them a lot in resonant circuits and also in um, DC motor circuits next we have electrolytic capacitors which you're just gonna find everywhere um, we use them for filters you're gonna find them in switch mode power supplies um, yeah yeah filters um, reservoir caps next we have tantalums which you don't really talk too much about them they operate a lower voltage but they have very low inductance and good stability and you find them in um, high precision circuits like uh, uh, sample and hold type things where you want low inductance good stability they work very well then we have uh, film capacitors I, I know I'm missing probably 30 different types of capacitors but these are the most popular ones film capacitors last for a very long time they're very stable um, they're non-polarized and you find them any type of circuit where you're gonna see phase shifting for instance um, analog to digital converters um, they also work well for uh, decoupling pardon my horrible handwriting I'm, I'm trying to make this easier for you guys to see but my handwriting may not be helping out very much all right the last thing we need to talk about is selecting a size of capacitor whether you want a um, through hole or SMD so they both have you know they're good points and bad points um in through hole capacitors you're going to find a lot of film capacitors ceramic um, electrolytics uh but i can think of off the top of my head now when we get to um smds you're going to find mostly ceramic and I think there are tantalum SMDs yep tantalum SMDs as well so you can find pretty much whatever you want in whatever size you're looking for um, keep in mind if you are going to be in a uh, rough environment whoops man I keep hitting this button on this little stylus here Are we okay rough or a rough environment then um aluminum electrolytics are going to be your best bet so i hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into choosing capacitors for your projects and if it does i hope you leave me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out and